Hey you guys, welcome to a new episode of Food and the Single Guy with me, your very own Amaru. This is the last episode of Food and the Single Guy and I figured why not go out with a bang? Well, a mini bang if you will, because the dish that I'm going to prepare today is the most requested dish on my channel. When I tell you that the amount of comments and private messages that I get pertaining to this dish is astounding, you got to believe me. Now, the dish is called nasi goreng, okay? Nasi means rice and goreng means to fry or to stir fry. This is a traditional Japanese dish from my country and while there are a lot of different varieties of nasi goreng in Indonesia, in all the different parts of Indonesia, because in all those different parts of Indonesia, people cook their nasi goreng differently. I can guarantee you that while you may see a lot of different ingredients be added to this dish on other people's channels, this one right here, this is the traditional recipe, the traditional way of cooking this dish. You know me, I don't like to mess up family favorites. When it comes to traditional authentic recipes, I want to give them to you just the way they are. I don't like it when people embellish. A lot of people from my country feel that since they live here in Europe now, they have to embellish and be extra. Not here, okay? I give it to you the way it is. And um, I have Japanese family members. I am such a mixed ma -wa. Okay, I have Japanese family members and I can assure you that the ingredients, which I will be listing in the video description box below the video, the ingredients for this dish are the original authentic ingredients that you will need to make your traditional Japanese nasi goreng. All right? And you know me, I always like to give you the backstory because I am trying to put my country on the food map, if you will, and I come from a country, my country is a melting pot, okay? And we have a lot of different types of people living in my country. And the beauty of it is that the cuisine of my country is so diverse and that is why I am so passionate about traditional re recipes. I don't, like I said, I don't like it when people butcher traditional recipes because why? You know what I mean? Am I making any sense to at least one of you? Okie dokie. Now, I have talked a lot. I think it's time that we get on with the cooking. Oh yes indeed, let's get on with the cooking. Before I introduce to you these babies, I have to give you the elaborate explanation, especially pertaining to traditional recipes from my homeland, because I hate it when people butcher traditional recipes, okay? I don't like it. I think you should stick as closely, as closely as you possibly can to the traditional recipe because you want to do the recipe, you want to do the dish justice, all right? And that is why I always give you the elaborate explanation. Now, what I have here is a large onion. I am going to finally chop this half in a minute. I have four bulbs of Chinese garlic and I have a nice piece of galanga root. And doesn't that look like a little piggy? It just occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what I'm going to do, I am going to grind the onions and the garlic in my mortar and I'm going to show you how it's done in a minute. Okay guys, we're going to add the garlic to the mortar like this, followed by the onion, just like this, easy does it. And I'm also going to add a little bit of salt. Now the salt is going to act like an abrasive agent because you want this to be pureed and when you add the salt, that is what the salt is going to do. Alrighty, let's get on with the grinding. And this is going to take you a minute. Oh, my boom boo is looking very good. Oh yeah. Now if you want to know what a boom boo is, go to my Bami Goreng video. I'm going to put the link in the video description box for your convenience in which I explain to you what a boom boo really is. All right? Now I could have easily put this in my blender, but I opted to uh, use my mortar instead because it's uh, so much more traditional. Now the reason I'm making so much is because I have a lot of rice. I'm feeding a lot of people today and um, you know. You have to have enough bumbu. Now the bumbu will act as a base for my dish. 
All right, now let's move on to my rice. And here's my rice. I'm using basmati rice, but you can use whatever type of rice you like. Um, the reason I'm using basmati rice is because it is a long grain rice, and after it's cooked, it cooks rather dry. You know, and that is the kind of rice that you need. You don't need a rice that cooks, you know, when it's finished cooking, it's a little wet. You don't need that. You need a rice that cooks dry, and um, that is going to uh, guarantee the best results for your uh, traditional Japanese nasi goreng. Okay guys, what I have here is my Chinese wok. In my country, we use a cast iron wok, that is tradition, but I can't find them up here, and in addition to that, they're very heavy. Now, I went to the supermarket, the Chinese supermarket, and I purchased this wok, and it will do. And don't let the fact that it's well used scare you, okay? <laughs> because I'm using my stuff. Now, um, it doesn't matter if you're preparing this dish in a Chinese wok or a Teflon wok or a cast iron wok, all right? So don't let that stop you from trying this delicious dish. Now let's move on to the cooking. Okay, so before I turn on the cooker hood, which is gonna make a lot of noise, I am going to explain to you what I'm gonna do step by step. And as you can see, I have the wok on my stove and I'm gonna heat a couple of spoonfuls of vegetable oil in this pan. Next, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna saute all the ingredients and I'm gonna try to speak through the noise of the cooker hood. And as I always tell you, if you cannot hear me or if I cannot hear what I'm saying on video, I'm gonna add some subtitles just for you. All right, so let's move on. So I'm gonna add about two, maybe, two and a half spoonfuls of vegetable oil. And I'm gonna turn on the cooker hood now. Now first what I'm gonna add to the pan is the shrimp paste, followed by the galanga root. We're gonna give that a nice stir. Now you're gonna allow this to saute for a minute on low to medium heat, upon which we're gonna add the Indonesian bay leaves. Next, what I'm gonna add is a nice amount of my bumbu. followed by two crushed chicken stock cubes. Just like this. And next what we're gonna add is three cooking spoonfuls of salted soy sauce. And about two spoonfuls of the sweet soy sauce. And you're gonna allow this to cook for about two minutes. Okay guys, next what we're gonna add is the rice. Now immediately after you've added the rice, you wanna stir well on high heat and you want to make sure that the rice is coated completely. Okay guys, now when it's all done, it should look a little something like this. Looking good, smelling good. Mm. I'm gonna give you the surfing suggestion in a minute, so bear with me. Now you know me, presentation is everything. So we are going to garnish our delicious nasi goreng with some freshly chopped parsley, just like so. And now for the surfing suggestion with the chicken. There we go. And a little bit of the sauce. And of course, some freshly chopped parsley. 
because presentation is everything. Traditionally, this is the way they serve this dish. You have the rice, you have the slice of tomato, you have a nice piece of chicken, you have the fried egg on the side, you have the pickled cucumber, and optionally, but that is completely up to you, you may want to add some hot sauce to give it a kick. Or, as they do up here, you may also serve this dish with some chicken satay and some peanut sauce, which is also delicious. But you know me, I like to stick to the traditional authentic. I like to, I like to stick to the real deal. Okay. Now you guys, if you decide to give this a try, let me know how it turned out because it's very easy. And this is one of those dishes, you guys, you can't just cook this for one person. As you well may well know by now, I live by myself, food and a single guy. I am not going to make a large batch of this fried rice for me. I will be eating for at least a week and a half. You know what I mean? So this is the type of dish that you would prepare when you're entertaining a group of people. And um, I was entertaining a group of people, my family. Yes, and they loved it. <laughs> So if you can find the ingredients in your neck of the woods, go to your tropical supermarket, you guys. Go to your Chinatown, your Asian supermarkets. They will have the galanga root. They will have a lot of these um, different herbs and spices that you, especially you in America, may, may, I say may, I said may, don't kill me, may not have heard of. I'm introducing them to you because I want you to dazzle your family with something new. You know me, I always like to try new things and I'm hoping that it will rub off on you too. You guys, I want to say, a, I want to give you a massive thanks. All of you that have subscribed to my channel, all of you that interact with me, my channel is steadily growing. I don't take that for granted. I am very, very appreciative to each and every one of you for helping my channel grow. I wish you nothing but the best all throughout the year, but especially for this new year that's ahead of us. All right? So thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of the Food and the Single Guy slash Amaru Cooks family. I am looking forward to seeing you next year. Be well. Take care. Happy cooking, happy eating, don't add crazy to the craziness, and I will see you when I see you. Have a good one, you guys. Bye.